Okay, let's spend a few minutes talking about analyzing the crime scene. But in this regard, we're going to focus more on behavioral indicators rather than um, uh, the physical evidence. Or if we look at physical evidence, we're going to try to interpret some behavioral aspects and some thought processes of um, offenders. So in a sense, we're going beyond the physical evidence and we're trying to come up with um, a typology, a psychological typology of, of profiling by looking at crime scene differences. And what you're going to find basically um, are two types in this typology, although probably a majority of offenders fall somewhere in between more or less into a uh, mixed uh, type but the disorganized asocial offender and the organized non-social offender. And, um, and, and, and these, uh, been, these two typologies, the disorganized organized basically has been criticized because it's seen as a continuum, disorganized and organized. And you, you know that the offender is thought to fall on one end or the other, but yet uh, we have these um, uh, you know, offenders that fall somewhere in between. They're not totally disorganized. They're not totally uh, organized. So these are typologies that may help somewhat, although the research is rather, uh, the research uh, begins to demonstrate that we have more mixed categories and other typologies than the, than the simple disorganized, organized uh, offenders. So it's very more, com it's, it's much more complex than um, what we have in this uh, brief brief overview, but uh, this sometimes can help us somewhat. When we look at, for example, the disorganized asocial offender, we start to build a profile of someone who tends to have a lower IQ and feels uh, very awkward and socially inadequate around other people. Often they're in unskilled uh, labor type work and they have a family history of um, instability uh, they may have experienced uh, physical uh, and emotional uh, abuse, and they tend to become somewhat anxious uh, during the crime, and um, they may live or work near the crime scene, tending to commit their crimes in uh, the evening. Uh, they may also um, have um, relatively few relationships as they're loners and um, uh, poor hygiene skills. And um, uh, they also tend to be male, non-athletic, and, and viewed by others basically as strange. But none of those indicators in and of themselves, and in fact, uh, even all of those, do not indicate that you have uh, an offender. Those are just some characteristics of the disorganized asocial uh, offender. And looking at some of um, their behaviors after the crime, especially a violent crime, they may return to the crime scene to view it. Uh, they may actually attend a victim's uh, funeral in, in the cases of um, homicide, and they may also turn to religion after they committed uh, their crime or crimes, and they may keep a diary and news clippings of um, uh, the crime, and they may um, change residence, but usually they don't move out of the community and um, change job. At some point out, they may actually change their personality uh, somewhat, but remember, we, we said the personality is relatively uh, uh, stable throughout, and, and so we might just see some changes um, behaviorally and maybe cognitively, but uh, I, I would have to caution with that particular uh, characteristic. But when you have the disorganized asocial type and you're interviewing, some of the um, features that may be helpful of an of interview is to actually show empathy and, um, pr and, and go ahead and uh, provide information directly to the offender. Um, maybe interview them in um, uh, the late afternoon or evening or even late in the evening if, if possible. That's kind of when they like to operate, as was mentioned before. And, and in essence, kind of use a clinical or counseling uh, a, approach with this type of uh, offender. In contrast, the organized non-social offender tends to have um, a higher uh, intelligence, higher IQ, uh, they tend to get along better with others. They um, may uh, 
be married or have significant other uh, or partner that even though they experience harsh discipline discipline similar to um, uh, the um, uh, disorganized uh, offender they're able to more control themselves sometimes they even may appeal appear to be uh, charming and, um, and and can put on the charm kind of what happens in in the, in the sociopathic type scenario where the person can um, kind of turn on that charm uh, they tend to have a masculine self image and are able to move around or move around occupationally and um, geographically um, when they are arrested and, and put in prison, they tend to be model prisoners. Uh, uh, they're more likely to um, uh, abuse drugs and uh, also be uh, labeled as um, sociopathic type personality. Some of the post-offense uh, behavior that we might see, again, um, returning to the crime scene, but also volunteering information and kind of uh, becoming a police groupie, helping the police solve the crime that they uh, committed. Uh, they they um, actually, uh, in, in cases of, um, of uh, murder, they may move the body or uh, dispose of the body in a way to actually draw attention to the crime and, 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 and view the crime and the investigation as um, uh, uh, an actual game. And... Um, and, 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 and they, you know, law enforcement or others may think that this person's actually trying to help out. You know, they're out there giving brochures, taking the lead, looking for a missing person, uh, and, and so on and so forth. One that they actually um, uh, kidnapped or killed. Some of the interviewing techniques suggested would include using more of a confront of direct strategy uh, and making sure that you have uh, the correct and accurate information when confronting them with uh, that information. And um, uh, the offender often will use uh, a variety of manipulative techniques to avoid uh, getting um, any more information out to the in investigator. Uh, so in essence, there's some crime scene differences that we can um, uh, begin to look at. You know, for example, if we look at organized versus disorganized, the organized is more likely to plan the event, while the disorganized, it, it's more spontaneous. Uh, um, and the organized is, is and, um, and 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 disorganized uh, also have some differences in terms of uh, uh, the organized may personalize the victim, while the disorganized is more likely to depersonalize. Uh, the victim and and avoid um, relationships or conversation uh, where the organized is more likely to try to uh, present more of a conversation uh, situation and um, the whole crime scene appears to be more controlled in the organized and of course in the disorganized it tends to be more um, cha chaotic but again I think really it's important to recognize we're going to see mixed categories and overlapping uh, uh, variables and looking at these these themes you know the organized is more likely to um, uh, use restraints move the body uh, will take the weapon with them that they use they, and they will not leave as much evidence where the disorganized is more likely to leave uh, you know, evidence um, uh, may even leave a weapon, may move the body around, may leave some um, uh, other uh, traces that could link um, uh, them to that particular crime uh, scene. And they may engage in uh, other uh, activities with the body after um, the um, uh, murder has been um, committed. So there are, again, some of these uh, differences here. Uh, but again, I really, uh, you know, caution you to recognize that uh, you're going to probably see more mixed categories begin to emerge as we start looking at different typologies and, and, and profiles. So you're not necessarily going to say completely organized, completely disorganized of offenders, but you're going to begin to see a continuum in, in the sense of, um, uh, of, of not just, uh, you know, uh, organized, disorganized. You're not going to see that. Um, uh, scenario of one group here and one group there, but you're going to see more of a mixed bag, a um, um, uh, you know, so with overlapping uh, you know characteristics, which of course makes any investigation uh, somewhat more complex. And if you study investigations, you can see how 
um, some of these characteristics materialize and also how some uh, do not. And this wraps up this podcast.